Narrative art can show action or tell a story. Some of my favorite drawings are the ones that illustrate the events in a story. A great illustration can make the story even better, or it can tell the story all by itself without any words at all. Narrative artwork can also tell us the events in a story about you. For this narrative drawing, I know that the main character, the protagonist, the star of the artwork is me. To make this narrative drawing, we're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil, and an eraser. So I'm gonna make a list of some actions or activities that I like to do. So for one, drawing and reading. I also like to cook. Lifting weights. Karate. Those are all activities that I participate in. When I look at this list though, some of them aren't really the best to make an interesting action-filled drawing. As much as I enjoy drawing, drawing myself sitting at a table drawing just doesn't sound as interesting. It can be done, but there are some better choices on the list. I'm thinking the most action-filled to make a really interesting character would be to use karate. I can draw the arms and legs in some interesting positions, and I think the background will look interesting as well as the details on the figure in the drawing. So now we're gonna move to our drawing paper. And we're gonna start off by drawing a basic skeleton for the character in a specific pose. So I'm gonna start by drawing the head, which is an oval, the ribs, which is another oval, and the hips, which is another oval. Now remember, this is a sketch, so you can make adjustments as you need to. I already adjusted the hips. I started off down here, and I just quickly moved it up a little. So as you see mistakes, fix them. So now I have to draw the arms and the legs. With karate, there are lots of different stances and moves that this character, me, I could be doing. I'm gonna connect the spine on here. And I'm gonna start by putting the legs. When I draw the legs, I'm gonna draw it in two sections. There's the femur, which is the longest part of your leg. And then this circle is the knee, followed by the rest of my leg. And then a foot at the bottom. So this foot is bent out. My other leg is gonna be drawn the exact same way with the same parts, but maybe bent a little differently. Femur again. And then the rest of the foot, or the leg, followed by the foot at the bottom. So he's kind of leaning back in a back stance. The arms are very similar to the legs. They have two pieces connected by the elbow. So I'm gonna start with my shoulder, which is at the top of the ribs. I know the ribs are an oval. It's natural to feel like the, the circle should go on the side of the oval, but our shoulders are high, so they need to go at the top of the oval. So there are both shoulders. So there's the first part of my arm. And then here is the second part with a hand at the end. There again is the first part of the arm with the elbow. There's the rest of the arm. and the hand. So there's my pose. I think it's a pretty interesting pose. Each arm and each leg are in a different position. 
They're not the same, which is more interesting than if both legs were the same or both arms were the same. The body's leaning a little bit, which puts some weight on the back leg. That creates a little bit of interest too. And now I can start to think about where the background's gonna go. There are lots of places that I could be doing karate. I could be outside, I could be inside. I'm thinking that's the floor. I know that there's a big window in the dojo where I do karate. So we'll do, there's the wall and then here's the window. Big windows. And then that's the rest of the wall up to the ceiling. So there's our basic sketch. We blocked in the figure using a skeleton. We've set up the background so that we're ready to start putting details in. And that's the next step, to add details to the figure and the background. And that could take a little while. So come back next time for the next part of this narrative drawing. I'll see you next time. Bye.